So what actually would be defined as medical negligence? Medical negligence, which is often used interchangeably with medical malpractice, is um, it is the main theory of liability with regard to medical malpractice. In fact, medical malpractice is an age-long thing, and it's simply medical errors that physicians or health practitioners commit, which lead to or which result in a bad outcome. And when they are proven to be as a cause, as as a cause of the negligence or substandard care, if he fails to act as a reasonable health practitioner would have done under similar circumstances. In other words, all health professionals are supposed to exercise that level of skill, diligence, and judgment that a reasonable physician would have done under similar or the same circumstances. Medical malpractice is, is generally an issue which may be emerging in Ghana, but is not as we see elsewhere in, in, in the developed countries. What people fail to see is that doctors or physicians as they are, are supposed to be some of the smartest people in society. Of course, rightly so, by their training, their retraining, their ded dedication to work and all that. But what people fail to realize is that they are humans. And they are, as humans, they are fallible. So such errors may arise, not necessarily as a result of their negligence. But I agree. Fortunately, most of these things may be insignificant. But in a few occasions, they may affect or impair someone's life. Is there any difference between medical malpractice and negligence? The negligence is actually the main theory of liability. If you want to prove or if medical malpractice suit should be successful, you have to prove that, let's say, the practitioner was negligent. So it's kind of a tool to determine whether there was malpractice or not. But basically, um, they are used interchangeably. And there's, I mean, a thin line, though, between them. Dr. Frank Ankobia of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital took us through some typical examples of medical malpractice and negligence. Example of medical malpractice, for instance, when somebody has a problem with, let's say, the right foot, and it's supposed to be amputated, and then it ends up that it is a wrong foot, which is the left one, that is amputated. I mean, this one, nobody would even tell you that as, you know, uh, negligence. Another type would be, you know, I'm sorry that I'm using the surgeons, 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 but for instance, if you operate and then you leave an instrument, a foreign object in the abdomen, and you close up, that also constitutes negligence. For instance, if you give wrong medication, if you are supposed to inject somebody with one type of drug and you end up injecting with another type of drug, obviously then there is malpractice. If, for instance, you have to set up blood on, on, on a patient, a patient needs blood, and then you put up the wrong type of blood and this patient reacts to it and something bad happens, that again will be uh, medical malpractice. Is misdiagnosis considered malpractice? That is one aspect. In fact, if you look in the literature or if you, in the United States, for instance, misdiagnosis forms about a third of all the lawsuits, all the malpractice suits. Misdiagnosis, failed diagnosis, misdiagnosis, delayed diagnosis. For instance, if someone comes to a hospital, Let's say a woman comes to a hospital. The woman is menopausal. is no longer menstruating, and she complains that she's been seeing blood. And the doctor does not take, does not go through critical investigations to rule out whether the woman has a cancer or something. 
and then the woman comes to give her medication, she goes, she comes back. By the time we realize she has, let's say, cancer of the cervix, stage three, you have delayed the diagnosis. It would have been seen, seen earlier on, but you kept on not going through, you know, the standard protocols and guidelines to investigate this woman. This is a, mis this is a delayed diagnosis. Let's say somebody has appendix comes to the hospital with abdominal pain, comes, she's giving medication, goes away, comes back, goes out, and eventually it ruptures and the person dies. This is a complete misdiagnosis. So, the, in fact, misdiagnosis actually forms a, a very, about a third of all malpractice suits. Do unexpected or unsuccessful results mean medical malpractice has occurred? So long as that the the practitioner falls within the standard care if any unexpected outcomes come or if any failures come then the practitioner is covered of course the patient or the client may decide that to her or to him it is malpractice and may want to sue but then when it comes to the courts the patient will have to prove that and I think the practitioner will have enough defenses to support, you know, the kind of treatment the practitioner gave. If, these, if the practitioner actually followed the standard guidelines, protocols, and gave standard care, then you can't say that there was malpractice. It is only when it is established that the care that the practitioner gave was substandard. That is when you can be talking about medical malpractice. But once it is standard care, any unexpected outcomes or any failures of treatment would not amount to malpractice. Often people tend to talk so much about malpractice. And you hear on radio, uh, on TV, People not even having full information, jumping into conclusions that there were malpractices. In fact, these things also affect the morale of doctors. I think doctors would not deliberately be wanting to cause harm to their patients. Often, something may happen. An unexpected outcome or a failure of treatment may occur, which do not border on the negligence of the physician. In that case, you cannot talk about malpractice. So really, Doc, we want to find out, who do you sue? Is it the medical center or the individual doctor or nurse? Generally, it is not because there's a bad outcome, then it means there's malpractice. Generally, no. Some outcomes may, may be bad, but the doctor may have done what standard practice demands of him. In that case, nobody can talk about malpractice. And you see, when he goes to court, it is up to, most often it is up to the patient to prove. The patient bears the burden of proof that the doctor had been negligent. That is what happens. It is up to the patient to prove. And when he gets to court, there are four things that the courts will look at. First, was there, did that doctor owe the patient a duty of care? In that case, did the doctor or physician-patient relationship exist? Did the doctor or the healthcare provider breach this duty of care? You must prove that, yes, the doctor or the healthcare professional actually breached this duty of care. And then you ask yourself the third point, this, did this breach lead to an injury to the patient? Again, there may have been other things which contributed to the injury sustained by the patient and not necessarily what the breach that the doctor occasioned, that occasion from the doctor's action. Then, did the patient suffer any damages? For instance, has the patient suffered from pain, other sufferings, has the patient lost wages as a result of not going to work and all that and all that? That would be the fourth thing. Generally, when it goes to court, in majority of the cases, the 
burden of proof is the patient who bears the burden of proof. Often it's the patient who will actually be the, comp the, uh, the plaintiff. And the patient bears the burden of proof that the doctor had been negligent. And in doing so, the plaintiff may have to bring in witnesses, expect witnesses. You are trying to determine whether the doctor's practice was the standard of care. So you need to bring other aspects who would know the standard of care. That is where at times there are problems. People think that doctors could not, not to talk about their own or protect their own. And that was what is called the conspiracy of silence. If, for instance, you had, you think the malpractice occurred in, let's say, Komfanochi, then you would not look up to a specialist, for instance, in my department, to come and tell you about the standard practice. You understand? You could bring somebody. It's not something that occurs. In fact, you know, malpractice suits are not common in Ghana. So we, haven't, we don't have enough basis to talk about this conspiracy of silence. But if you are in doubt, you can bring an expert from, let's say, Kolibu Tamale to come and testify. For instance, there was a case that happened in 1975 in Um Asante Kremu versus Eiji, where a lady, a young lady, had an ectopic, was operated, and then they set up an IV line, the hand got swollen and necrotic, and then she ended up with an amputation of the arm. The court said, look, this one, the matter speaks for itself. You look at it and you say, this one, the matter speaks for itself. And for that, you do not need any expect.